Before you can manipulate a measured value with a computer program or a microcontroller program, you need to somehow convert it from an analog voltage to some kind of a digital uh, representation so that you can do calculations on it. Most systems use a successive approximation algorithm to convert those analog voltages to digital values. And I'm going to outline how that works. Suppose we had an input voltage at this level here, somewhere between zero and our reference voltage of five volts. So this looks like it's somewhere around two volts, but we don't know what that voltage is yet. We could figure out what that voltage is by comparing it to the reference voltage. Well, certainly it's less than the reference voltage, so we know it's less than five volts. Is it less than half the reference voltage? So there's half the reference voltage, and yeah, it is less than half. So we know that it lies somewhere in this region here. So it was less than half, so let's represent that with a zero. If it was over here, we'd represent it with a one. Well, let's successively approximate. Let's split this region in half again and test it against a voltage that's halfway along. And it's greater than that voltage. So we know now, because it's greater, it fits somewhere into this region here. And that was greater, so we'll call that a 1. And now we'll test against the halfway point again. And we wind up below the halfway point. So we know we're in that region there. Another 0. And finally, we'll test against this halfway point and it's above, so we know we're in this region in here. And that was a 1. So for this voltage, we got 0, 1, 0, 1, and we could carry this on for as many bits as we wanted, but we'll go, we got one bit of information there, two bits when we did it again, three bits total when we did it again, and now four bits. So we'll stop after four bits of conversion just for this example. And if we go up here, 0, 1, 0, 1 represents all of the voltages that lie between those two limits. And if we convert that from a binary number, 0, 1, 0, 1, well that's 1 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 8 is 5. So we've got a number representation of our voltage now. So let's try that again with a different voltage. Suppose we had a voltage over here. Well, it's higher than the middle, higher than the 2.5, so we know it's in this region here. And if we then split it in half again, well, it's higher than that value, just a little bit, but it is higher. So we know it's on this side over here. That's our second bit of information. And now we test it against the halfway point, and it's lower. So we know it lies somewhere in this voltage range here. And we test it again against the halfway point, and it's still lower. So we know it lies somewhere in that region in there. And so we've isolated it in between these two voltage limits. We got a 1 on the first try. The next one was also a 1 because it was higher than the mid-range voltage when we did our comparison. But the next time it was a 0. And the next time it was a 0. So 1, 1, 0, 0. 0 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 4, plus 1 times 8, is 12. So our result for this conversion is 12. Now how do we convert that back into a number that's representative of the voltage? Well, we're going from 0 down here, which is representative of a voltage in this range just a little bit bigger than 0 halfway through that first division, up to 15, 
with our four bit conversion over here, which is representative of a voltage about here, just a little bit less than that reference voltage. So if we want to get our best estimate of that unknown input uh, voltage, we don't know where it is inside these bounds, so our best guess is that we'll guess it's in the middle. So our estimate says it's in the middle. And it goes on a scale from zero up to the reference voltage. So we'll say that our best estimate for our input voltage is the reference voltage divided into the number of divisions we've got 0 up to 15 for 4 bits is 16 divisions or if n is the number of bits we've got it's 2 to the n so 2 for 1 bit 4 for 2 bits and so on up to 16 for 4 bits and, and carrying on from there. Now if we multiply that times this result here that will give us 0 when it's 0 and it'll give us this edge when it's 5 and that edge when it's 12. So we'd like to move into the middle so we'll add a half. So there's a formula that allows us to convert back to our best estimate of what the input voltage was based on the uh, digital binary result that came out. So let's take our first example VN, this one over here where we got 5 our reference voltage is 5 volts divided by 2 to the n is going to be 16 times the value we got here 5 plus a half and if we punch that value in we get 1.72 volts that's not too far off. That would be one and a quarter halfway there. So that's, yeah, that's about 1.72 is a pretty good, uh, pretty good estimate. Now let's consider if instead of the case where we had R equal to 5, what if we had the other one where we had R equal to 12? That was our 1100. Zero, zero. Then we get V in equal to 5 over 16, same as before, that's our range and our resolution, times 12 plus a half, that puts us in the middle of this zone here, and that equals 3.91 volts. And let's try a couple of limiting tests Suppose R was equal to zero. That would give us V in, our estimated V in, as 0 0.16 volts. So not zero volts, it'll tell us that we're somewhere in this first zone here, and that's about the middle of that first zone, 0.16 volts. Likewise, if R was equal to 15, that means we're in this last region here, not quite up to 5 volts. We might have 5 volts, we might have less. And when we plug it into the equation, we get V in equal to 4.84 volts. So that's how we can estimate an actual voltage input based on our successive approximation analog to digital conversion. And the more bits we have, if we have more than four, if we have ten, for instance, the more divisions we'll be able to separate the voltage into, and the more accurate our measurement will be.